Now the engine's together. I'm just gonna do a pressure test on it. I'm gonna run the system under compressed air just to check it all out, see whether there's any leaks anywhere and to check the uh, boiler pump. I'd rather do it with cold water than hot steam. So let's see what's happening. First off, I'm gonna fill the tank Whoa. Well, that filled up a bit quick. Um, I'm getting used to just how much water goes into here. It's already going down as it goes through into the other tank via the connecting pipe that goes underneath the cab floor. Let's see if the pump is gonna work. I'll need a bit of pressure. Now what I've done is, I've opened the bypass and I can see the water pumping into the tank there. A whole load of it, so that means the pump's working. And if I turn it off, so it's now pumping into the boiler, that works too. And it's not dribbling. So the pump's all working, it's a good healthy sign. Good healthy start. So now I'm going to pump it up hydraulically and see whether any of the fittings are leaking. I'd rather do it with water up to working pressure than with steam and burn myself trying to tighten the various things that might leak. I'm going to take the filler plug off the boiler. Really useful to have this rather than have to put it all in through the um, fill valve down here. I'll just watch it come up. What's great is these pump bottles I use can go up to certainly a hundred pounds per square inch, maybe a bit more. But they make a really good uh, hydraulic pump, really quick and easy hydraulic pump to test things out with. So I just fill up the boiler. You can see the water level coming up there nicely in the water gauge. I'll just show you with the pump. Hopefully you can see that water level rise up with the engine pumping through the axle pump. It'll be quite slow. Yep, that's coming up. Perfect. It's exciting. What I like about um, having a fill valve, which has a, an O-ring on it here, and uh, no fiber washer or copper washer, is that you just need to screw it finger tight, and it's sealed. No need for a wrench or a spanner on that. Now, we come around here to the pressure gauge and uh, I've got almost a full glass of water there. Now is the moment I'm connecting the water fill valve and I'm going to pump it up. See the safety valve square off there, about 45 pounds per square inch. I had to put a spacer in the safety valve to um, finally get the pressure to blow off at 45. The spring was a little bit um, weaker than I thought it was, so I put a spacer in. It's falling back a little bit. I don't mind that. I don't think there's any major leaks anywhere. So, time for a steam test. Okay, I'm going to fill out with hot water from the kettle into the gravy boat, baby jug I borrowed from the kitchen. And then I'm going to pour it in here. I like to use hot water, it'll just speed the process up. I've emptied the cold water out. And now I've got 
three quarters of a glass of water, nice hot water. I'll um, put the plug back in and um, I'm going to gas fire it. Before I forget, I need to put some oil in the displacement lubricator. Put the top off. Cylinder oil, nothing else. Pop it in. It's a nice full lubricator. Okay, and don't over tighten this, it's on a, um, an O-ring. I bought this blower on eBay. It's fairly crude. It's just a battery operated one. I needed to make a special adapter so that it fit this chimney. Like so, I need it to suck out the, um, the gases and make the fire come through the tubes. I'll use that coal firing as well, but this time I'm going to do it with gas firing. Just to make it easier on this test run, I'm going to use my little plumber's blowtorch to heat the engine up. I'll do this before I do a test with coal firing. It just makes it easier. I can turn the gas off quickly. If there's a problem, I can control it a little bit better than I can a coal fire. So make sure all my wires are out of the way. I don't want to melt them. That's for the, um, for the RC. Open up the firebox and light the torch. Start the blower. Should be called a sucker, really. I've got about 10 pounds, 15 pounds on the clock, just using the uh, plumber's blow lamp here. So I'm going to take the fan off and put the steam blower on and let's see how that works. Seems to be having a nice little shower of wet steam. The pressure rises, that should um, clean up a bit. There's a bit less pull on the fire. Well, I can adjust it. This is the first time this has been under steam. Coming up slowly. So now I'm just going to open the throttle a little bit. We've got uh, just under 20 pounds on the clock. Let's see how it spits and... A little warming up. Don't want to get my hand trapped underneath there between that counterweight. That could be vicious. I'm going to close the throttle and uh, let it cook for a bit longer. Let the pressure come up a bit more. Okay, this is it. First time the engines run under its own steam. Just let the pump come off. Quite watery. Still pulling the flame, which means that the exhaust system is working properly. Gosh, is that cool or what?
I can't reverse it unfortunately because I haven't got the radio control set up. I just want to run it. Nice plume of steam coming out of the chimney. If I take the camera. If I take the camera off the tripod, you can see the plume of steam. Really nice. Look at that. Look at that nice plume of steam coming up. Next up, cold firing.